have a child or a relative who is classified or falls under the category of a special need person? Are there things you have learned as a parent or a caregiver that you wish if you wish, if you had the power and the might, you would change in regards to birth injury or the information that you know about birth injury, birth trauma and genetics. Now, birth injuries are several. We have what we call the brachial plexus or Ebb's palsy. This one affects the shoulder and the arm, which can be on the right or on the left, depending on how the injury manifests itself. We have CP, cerebral palsy, and then we have fistula that affects mothers. And I know most of you do not consider fistula as a birth injury. Yes, it is a birth injury, but now not on the child, but on the mother. Remember that all these things, when you do an early intervention, then you can have or make their life more bearable. Because then it means that a mother will be able to control her pee or bowel, for example. And then we have a child who will go through occupational therapy and go through physiotherapy to correct it, meaning a child will be independent. Now, this is why birthmark comes into place. Now, we have situations whereby people complain that they have children with delayed milestones. Sometimes they don't know that the, that the, the, the milestones are delayed. And when you're not aware, you may not know what to do. It is very, very important for couples with children to maintain regular clinic visits. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because We've noticed, and you will agree with me, every birth leaves a mark and every pregnancy is different and how it comes even after you deliver. You, you're not going to use the same system you used when you're, you're bringing up your first child and, and, and use it on the second or subsequent children because you notice that children are very different. Now, based on all this, birthmark comes on board as um, as a, as a tool to help you or to remind you of your duty as a parent or a caregiver that you need to take your children to hospital to check delayed muscles if at all there is any. But now again, in this episode today, we are going to talk about gene counseling or genetic counseling. Welcome to Bathmark. My name is Adiambo Pondo and our Twitter handle is Bathmark underscore Kenya or our YouTube handle is Bathmark with Adiambo. Are there days you wish you were more informed before you make or before you made certain decisions in life? I mean, me too. But more often than not, some of these things come as regrets. But then again, we cannot move forward if we keep looking back. As I said earlier, today we're going to talk about gene counseling and ge or genetic counseling. And we're going to define what gene counseling is or genetic counseling is. And this is a process where uh, we investigate individuals or families affected or at risk of genetic disorders to help them understand and cope and adapt with genetic diagnosis. Let me tell you, one of the other things that I fear in life, or rather the people that I respect more in this life, are doctors and teachers. Why? Because doctors are the people who are going to look up at your kid, they're going to diagnose your kid, and then they will have to give you the, the results, however nasty or, or, or heartbreaking it is. Imagine you take your child to hospital and then someone tells you, you know what, your baby cannot talk. You need to do ABCDF. I mean, how does that feel? So, I mean, this is why we say, you know, it's, it's very, very important for us to go to hospitals and see um, gene counselors to help us see if perhaps whatever it is that our kids are suffering from are as a result of either birth injury or out of genetics. Because we, we have people who are, you know, impaired either visually or um, a visual impairment. I think I'm not very sure if these ones are genetic or this is due to environmental but it's good for us to know that. Now, um, we need to ask ourselves, why is gene counseling important? Why do we need to do, what are the reasons why we need gene counseling? We need gene counseling when planning for pregnancy. And this is important because many times couples come together, they love each other. Oh, I love you, oh my sweetheart, oh my babe. But we don't investigate, if at all, we are carrying certain genes that can make our lives unbearable. It is bearable, but it can be very taxing and draining. So, when planning for pregnancy, you need to see a health care 
to a healthcare professional to help you identify because you're going to give history. And based on the history that you're going to give, this gene counselor will tell you what kind of gene test is appropriate for you based on the kind of history, because they will ask, there's usually a process of, you know, doing all this, taking down of history. Do you have history of, of ACD, for example, sickle cell? Do you have history of hemophilia, for example? Do you have, they're going to investigate a lot of things, high blood pressure, asthma. Why do we need gene counseling? We need gene counseling when planning for pregnancy. Why is this important? This one is important because it helps couples to know if they're at risk of inheriting or if they're at risk of their kids inheriting certain disorders in, that runs in the family. We have asthma, for example, which can be very devastating. We have sickle cell, we have hemophilia. There are cases where, um, you know, hypertension is also, um, is also in genetic, and our children can actually get this. We have asthma as well. And, and people who have asthma can actually tell you that before you get to a point where you know how, how asthma is, then probably there could be a damage or two that is done. So um, it's very important for the couples who've not gotten their babies to go for gene counseling, walk into a hospital, tell them you, you plan to get pregnant and we need to do gene counseling. They will just, so you just give your history. They will take down your history and then they'll ask you, do you have history of this ABCDF? And then you do your gene therapy thing and then you can get help. And the other time where we also need gene, um, gene counseling is during pregnancy. And um, the pregnant women who possibly have fibroids, the people who conceive and sometimes the kids come out and they don't understand why this kind of miscarriages also happen. Sometimes all these things can help because you'll be able to know that I'm, I'm, I conceive and I can't carry my baby to town because in my family we have a history of cystic fibrosis or fibrosis or um, you can still check if you're pregnant, if you have a history of ACD, for example, and um, or maybe hypertension, because what we call preeclampsia is also very common amongst pregnant women. Um, this is where women get high blood pressure during pregnancy, which can be very, 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 very bad. And it can see um, a mother losing life or um, a child dying while in utero. And then we also need gene counseling while taking care of our children. And this one comes in as, as this. Um, we already have our child, and we've noticed that our child have um, our child has a delayed milestone, for example. Our child is not walking, or maybe the child has taken too long to talk. Our child has taken too long to walk, to crawl, or maybe they've skipped certain milestones. It is good for a couple, or for couples to go to hospital to seek medical advice so that we don't buy time Assuming that, you know what, Atole Mingina Litemea after five years, or even the other one who walked after five years, you could be preventing something that can, can actually be prevented. And then you make life bearable for that child or even for the caregiver. And I know uh, mothers or caregivers or parents who take care of special needs children can actually tell you it is not an easy journey. Emotionally draining, financially draining, and every other thing. So this is why Bathmark is here for you. Bathmark is here to uh, remind all of us that we need to work hand in hand with our our doctors or with hospitals just to know what can be prevented and this way we will be able to save a lot of lives and then the last one why we need to do um, gene counseling is to help us manage um, our health now we have all these disorders with us now what do we do a gene counselor will be able to tell you what to do sometimes nutrition wise what to eat the kind of exercises to do and um, to make your life more you know, manageable. And in conclusion, I'd like to state again, we all need to visit our hospitals for proper assessment, again, to save lives. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about what we need to do once all these birth injuries have been manifested and we have our children right with us. We're going to visit institutions that do uh, physiotherapy. We're going to do visit institutions that do occupational therapy. We're going to visit homes where we have our local people uh, we call them the, the traditional people who do massages. Do they understand exactly what they're doing? And are they seeing any kind of improvements? We're going to visit special schools to see how these kids can also be incorporated in schools. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Adhiambo Bondo.